Now that you've set up SSH on the server, you can connect to it from any computer that can reach it over the network it is connected to. If you're running a virtual machine on VirtualBox, you can connect from your host computer, the one that's running VirtualBox. In this lesson, I'll cover connecting with iTerm2 for Mac OS X. You'll learn how to connect with PuTTY for Windows in an upcoming lesson. iTerm2 for Mac OS X is free to install but isn't available in the App Store. Just browse to iTerm2.com, click on Download, and then double-click the iTerm app application after it downloads. Click on Open, click on Move to Applications folder, and you're all set. You can start it by going to the launch pad and typing iTerm and it'll come up. Now you'll have to know the IP address of your server. To find out your IP, you type IP space ADDR for address, and then you can pipe it out to grep inet. The first address listed, 127.0.0.1, is a reserved IP used for your loopback adapter. Your loopback adapter is for testing and for internal communications on your server. Some applications have to talk to other applications using networking, and if the loopback adapter is installed and configured, they can do this without ever leaving your computer. The ones that say INET 6 are IP version 6 addresses that we're not worried about for this lesson. The one that says INET and starts with either a 10 dot something, a 172 dot something, or a 192 dot something is probably the one you're interested in. As you can see, mine is 192.168.254.105. So to SSH, we'll go. We'll just type SSH. Then your username that you used on the computer when you're setting it up on your server. Then the IP address. One ninety two dot one sixty eight dot two fifty four dot one zero five. You're going to get a message here saying that it's downloading the host key for the server you're connecting to. You should only get this the first time you connect to a new server. You can say yes to continue. Now it's asking me for my password to log in. And I'm in. See how the name changed to Ubuntu Remote. So I'm on my server. You can type any command you would normally type. And do, do whatever you want on the server now. I can run sudo commands. And I'm on. One note of caution. If you're making any changes that involve networking, the SSH service, or your firewall, and you're in remotely, you can lock yourself out. This is not a big deal if you're on a server where you can connect through the terminal easily. It could be a problem, though, if you're connected to a cloud server or a server on the other side of the country where it's not easy for you to get to a terminal. My suggestion is to keep this terminal session open if you're making changes to one of those things and then test to make sure that terminal is still working for you, that SSH is still working for you before disconnecting this session. There are some changes you could make 
such as disconnecting your firewall or making a mistake on your firewall that could lock you out immediately. So use extra caution when doing network changes over an SSH session. So we've just learned how to authenticate with username and password. In upcoming lessons, we're going to learn how to authenticate more securely using PKI, which stands for Public Key Infrastructure. We're going to make some SSH keys. We'll SSH keys. We'll keep the private key on our server or the computer we're connecting from. And we'll give our public key to the server that we're connecting to. And we'll put a password on that as well. It's much more secure than username and password. In fact, we'll